Many full-time RVers who sold everything to live a nomad life are regretting some of those decisions they made. We did it differently and are loving a location-independent RV lifestyle. We're going to share with you why having a home base became a huge part of that RV lifestyle. These choices we made on the path to our RV life could save you from making a huge mistake. On this episode of Roaming with Rosie. Hey Roamers, I'm Jamie. I'm Linda. And this is Roaming with Rosie. And in January, we moved into this 2006 Alpha Sia motorhome and we hit the road. And after five months on the road, we are sure that we absolutely love it. But in the few years of planning that led up to getting to this point, we concluded that we didn't have to sell everything, including a home base, in order to get to here. In fact, getting rid of a home base is a main reason why a lot of full-time RVers have found them in a lifestyle that's way more expensive than when they initially started out, sometimes leading to divorce or running out of all of their savings and having to start over. We're going to tell you about four ways to avoid being stuck in a nomad life that you can't get out of and instead enjoy a much more realistic RV life of location independent living, which gives you more of a balance between security and freedom. What is a location independent lifestyle? Well, it's the ability to travel and work from anywhere you choose, but you're still attached to a particular plot or plots of land. It's the ability to be able to work from anywhere there's a good internet connection, which is also sometimes called a digital nomad. Location independent people often have a home base where they go when they're not traveling, but they don't usually have obligations there. Are you already living an RV life? Go down to the comment section and let us know if you're a Team RV Nomad or a Team RV Base Camp. RV living is the answer to a lot of things. It sure has been for us. But it does come with it a whole new set of issues that you might not have planned for or might not have thought of that'll keep it from being as enjoyable as you thought it might be. But on this episode, we're gonna give you four options for keeping an RV home base or an RV Base Camp, and we'll tell you the difference between those. For the purpose of this video, we're defining a home base as property owned by the RVer with a residential structure such as a home, condo, apartment, or duplex, and an RV base camp as property owned by the RVer with or without utilities where the RV can be parked and continue to be lived in. Did you know that the majority of full-time RV nomads will decide that they want an RV base camp or a home base within three years of starting their nomad life? In the past two years might have a lot to do with it. We've had so much that's out of our control. We've had the pandemic. A lot of people lost their jobs. Now the cost of everything has gone up so much that you can't afford that and anything else at the same time. There's just so much that's out of our control or that we can't plan for. And if you're watching this, you may, may have chosen or are considering an RV lifestyle as a way to deal with all those issues. Having an RV lifestyle may be the answer that you're looking for to deal with all these problems. Now look, it is a great thing, we really enjoy it, but now that you have this dream, you also have a lot to lose. And you're thinking all these RV YouTubers that you watch, they look so stress-free and happy. And a lot more of them than you realize are now actually living location independently rather than as complete nomads. But you feel like your current living situation is squeezing you out of any possibility of you living this RV dream. And you're watching time just speed right on by. Now retirement looks like it's further and further away, if not even impossible, and you just want to escape. And we totally relate to that. We get it. We made a decision early on that we were not going to wait until retirement to do this because we know firsthand that every single day gets closer and closer to a day when it might be too late. We've decided not to do like everybody else did and just sell it all and we're so glad we made that decision. By the way, if you think you're going to sell it all now and just buy something again later, keep in mind that any major changes in your life such as living circumstances or employment changes don't look really good on a loan application so you may want to consider doing that before you make all the changes. Real estate is in a major fluctuation right now, 
So you may want to talk to a licensed real estate agent and talk to them about what your plan is, about what you're trying to buy or what you're selling. And if you're still on the fence about RV, RV nomad life or location independent RV life, here are some of the challenges that a lot of full-time RVers are trying to get relief from. Yeah, like we can all say right off the bat, fuel prices. When we first headed out in January, we thought that diesel fuel was high. It was $3.89 a gallon. Well, now it's $5.99 a gallon where we currently are, but we know it's even higher in other places. And this RV only gets 8 to 10 miles a gallon. So with a 100-gallon tank, $600 to fill it, you can appreciate that was not something we planned for. Not to mention campground overcrowding. Like airline seats, they get a lot more money when they cram a lot more RVs into the campgrounds. Right, and then they've raised the price of the RV spots, you know, the rentals in RV parks. Boondocking spots are being shut down due to fire and flood danger. Also, due to illegal activity and not enough people to police it, you have campers who are leaving their garbage, leaving campfires unattended, and also leaving broken down equipment. Yeah, and those fires and floods that are causing so many of the closures this year, um, they're really widespread. I mean, now you just hear all the news on Yellowstone. We equip the RV to be able to chase 75, especially in the summer. And for us to suddenly switch and go to an RV park like in the mountains, the rates now are, are easily $70 a night for a rig this big. But wait, there's more. RVs also shake and break. I don't know of any that are built for full-time RV living or driving. And when we're driving down the road, we're going like from point A to point B, sometimes we'll be talking and we'll hear just a groan or a major pop. And we just sit there and we listen to all of it and we feel things shuddering and sometimes cabinets <laughs> burst open for no reason. And then if something really does break, where are you going to find an RV shop that you could trust as well as be able to even get into and get something fixed in a reasonable amount of time? If you're in a relationship, you got to make sure that both of you are on board with living this lifestyle. This lifestyle can be the worst or the best thing that ever happened to you. But the one thing you have to remember is you're going to be with each other almost 24-7. So now that we've ruined all of your excitement about this lifestyle, we're going to tell you how you can set up your RV life to withstand some of these difficulties. Now most of the RVers that we met this year either have a home base or are looking at purchasing a home base or they may have family members who will let them stay on their property when they need to stay somewhere. Today we're going to focus on four ways those who are currently living a nomad life, meaning they have no home base or they don't have an RV base camp and they're moving into a style of RV living that gives them much more security as well as even more freedom. Number one, what we did is we sold our home and we purchased a home in a, another state where homes are more affordable, where we can park the RV, hook it up, and we also have a dump station as well. And then we did all this before hitting the road. Now another thing you, uh, you may want to consider is that real estate is in a huge flux right now. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to talk to an experienced licensed real estate agent and talk to them about what you're planning. So we decided to keep a sticks and bricks property, not the one that we had. Um, like Jamie said, we bought a different one. You could do that, or you could purchase a condo or even a duplex. If you're gonna rent part of it out or all of it out, make sure before you purchase that it's allowed there. And also consider short-term leases. Yeah, there's Airbnb. Um, you have to make sure that that's allowed there. But we were thinking more in terms of like medical travelers with 90 day contracts. And that way you still have a place that you can come back to within a reasonable amount of time. And then the second option is you can purchase a mobile home that's on property that already has utilities hooked up to it. Now the mobile home could be in bad shape and that doesn't really matter. What you can do if possible is remove the mobile home, pour an RV pad there, and the point being is that you don't have the expense of having to bring in the utilities. Yeah, so another an example is our friends have a couple of acres in Arizona and they're considering an RV life like we're doing. So we were brainstorming things. So one thing they could do is they could take their sticks and bricks house and they could make that a long-term rental, like a year-long lease. They have a barn on the property currently for their business, so they could turn that really into a really cool glamping site, put an RV inside there, 
and then they have plenty of room that they could set up an RV base camp for themselves. So if they need to get off the road, if they want to get off the road, they could come back to that property. Even though the other two spots are rented, they would still have a place for themselves to stay. Option number three is you can buy land and bring utilities in, or maybe it might already have utilities on it or you can go completely off grid. The one thing you want to make sure is whatever your plan is, you're able to do it there. Or you can do where you go into a partnership and per purchase the property together. And you also want to make sure that you're able to get the RV in and out really easy. And if that all seems like way too much, another really popular option right now is to just purchase an RV lot. So those are usually planned, permitted. All you got to do is show up and park and live there and we've seen quite a few of them. You could also do beach style living that way. Um, in the south where the hurricanes are such a concern and people don't want to necessarily buy a house there, you can purchase an RV lot there that's all ready for you to enjoy the beach and if mother nature starts to act up, you can just drive away. And some of these RV uh, lot developments are really great for socializing, they have amenities, mm -hmm. And they also make it easy so that you can just lock up and leave. A lot of them have casitas and also have storage units. Many of these RV lots can be leased out as well, which will help offset the cost of the lot or maybe at best even create an income. Right. And if you don't have the cash to do this, once again, consider doing it before you make all these major changes in your life, especially the way that you make an income. Um, you do want to do it when you qualify for the best possible rates. With all four of these comes the option of a place to go in times of trouble and also a possibility of generating some income. The other thing that's really cool about this is it also helps you uh, have a place to store things because the way storage units are charging right now is just incredible. With having a storage unit is really helpful though because then you can buy a much smaller RV. We bought this huge one thinking we were going to have to take everything that we wanted with us all the time. If you have that storage unit back at your property, you can just go through and change out seasonally and have a much smaller RV. The amount of risk you can take in creating a complete RV lifestyle really depends on your financial status, your work status, also your property ownership, as well as your health status. It also depends on your age range. If you're like in the 20 to 50 year old age bracket and you're currently employed, you might be able to work remotely or be a traveler for your job. You might be able to keep your same income. And living in an RV might be the best way to keep a roof over you and your family's heads. Then you could put away money for savings to eventually buy a sticks and bricks down the road. You also have time to change your lifestyle and um, regroup from any mistakes that you make in your life. But like us on the north side of 50, it may be completely opposite of the people who are in the first half of their life. You may own a home, you may own a condo, you may own property, and it starts out as an idea, and you start watching YouTube, and now you have a dream, but also you have a lot to lose. That's right. If you're in the second half, you may not have the time to regroup from choices that you make. But that doesn't mean that you can't move into this lifestyle. It still could be a good solution for you, especially with a lot of the jobs that are being offered right now. Um, they're usually seasonal jobs, but they look for seniors who will come and work for them. We did an episode this year about the new and fun work options that are out there that are available. Uh, most of these options love uh, seniors to come and work for them and they pay really well. We'll put a link down in the description below in this video. Bottom line is we're trying to help you make the best choice for your RV lifestyle and consider some of the options that you may not have thought of. If you've been following our travels you know that we like to have less commitment and way more freedom. But we don't regret any of the choices that we've made getting us to this point because we feel really secure that we can weather any of the storms that come up. Hey Roamers, thank you so much for watching this video and if you know anybody who's in this dilemma, we'd really appreciate it if you would share this video with them. And if you haven't already, make sure and hit that subscribe button. And do ring that bell, that way you'll be able to see more videos that are like this. And if you have any questions or have any ideas, please share them down in the description below. That way you could be part of the conversation. Until next time, see, we'll see ya. ya.